Okie dokie, time to see if he can escape from this lead with a winning record. A two-lander! It's, it's exactly what I wanted for Christmas. Obviously Christmas not exactly happening right now, but that just shows you how long ago it was since I had a decent two-lander. So basic island still could be could be Drake's could be could be most decks in uh, Popper to be fair. Like blue is definitely the best color, has most of the best cards. Looks like blue black control though. It could still be some other sort of semi fringe strategies like uh, like you could have a blue black version of the Reanimator deck I played last week. So. Do I want to play for uh, pay for this war marshal? I don't think so. I want to just. Uh, I'm not gonna play around. In Vicar's Justice. Uh, this game, I just want to get them dead as quickly as possible. Now, obviously, in Vicar's Justice, cost four, but oh, okay, they're dead. Good games, good games. Uh, well, as I said, Fire Blast definitely gets a lot worse post sideboard, so I'm less inclined to have them. Molten Rain seemed good, and it's, it's it's smart that they conceded so early, since I didn't get to determine if they were like on teachings or anything. But typically, against blue black lightning bolts, are like the worst card, and like Fire Blast. Uh, Pyro Blasts are good. I mean, obviously Pyro Blasts are pretty good. Um, it's possible that Bolts are better than, say, uh, Sparksmith. But at least Sparksmith is a body. Whereas, you know, actual just deal 3 damage isn't that great. Now, on the other hand, if they're on the version with Pristine Talismans, I kind of need a couple of Smash the Smithereens in my deck. But we don't know that for sure. So I'm going to I'm gonna err on the side of caution and put in one. And that's not a whole lot of caution. Uh, but like I, I, I really hate the idea of bringing this in if they don't have them. Because really not everyone does. And if they do, there's only like one or two. So like having just a dead card in our hand, or having two dead cards in our hand, can be the difference between like winning a game and losing a game, since it usually comes down to quite small margins. Whereas Death Spark I quite like, since it does let us uh, grind other creatures to a reasonable extent. Like they'll usually deal more damage than a lightning bolt over time. Hmm. This is a chain or edict. Yeah. All right. So this is. This is off to a reasonably bad start. Well, there's a there's talisman. Like I, I like I say I could have went more in on you know having answers to it, but you know we have the smash in our hand, so it would be nice to be able to blow up that turn there, since they could easily have things like mull drifters or something next turn. I mean, ever uh, they all have radiant fountains, but they don't all have. Well, they, to be fair, they don't all have radiant fountains. I actually don't like radiant fountain that much. But, alright. Echoing Decay. Ugh, that's brutal. That's really punishing for draws like this, where we're sort of priced into playing the same, like, the same particular cards. Well, time to clear out one of them, and... Try and recover from here. They only have three cards left. So it's not totally incon inconceivable. Got my Gangler? Alright, sure, why not.
time to get ready to kill it with uh, Sparksmith if they don't do something. See, I, I actually don't like Radiant Fountain because this these decks are super color heavy. So any time where you're, you know, you've got like black cards, blue cards all over the place, and pristine talismans, and you know, there's not actually that many good uses for a colorless source of mana. Okay, so we we have op we have an option here because we can play this without kicker and like sparksmith this and then death spark it. But I think I'd just rather you know get deal eight damage and then try and do this next turn. But on the other hand, I'm not sure we'll have a better chance at being able to kill this. Like they, I mean, they definitely they'll definitely have counter spells in their deck, but they don't necessarily always have like a like a, an answer to an in play creature with this mana. So this is gonna look really really strange, but here it goes. Killed it. So hopefully they're just all out of gas now. I would have obviously we preferred this bushwhacker to be any other one drop creature and then um, not wasted the damage but it's not like they don't have a pristine talisman in play already right like they just doming them for a bunch isn't that useful wow I really hope we draw a creature I hope we draw a creature so bad still gonna play this echo cost though even though there's a chance we might draw heal cutter which we wouldn't be able to play, and then I'd look foolish. Pyroblast, that's not not the card I was looking for, but I don't think it's bad. And just having Sparksmith sitting untapped means they can't really attack. I guess I could have attacked. Probably should have attacked. What does this mean? So what if I Sparksmith it now? to determine exactly how much damage it's going to get to deal since I don't want to block with one creature and then activate it because then they can kill some numbers of my creatures I mean they can still kill some numbers of my creatures now but that way I've just taken 4 damage and not lost multiple goblins and I can try this again next turn because I still have enough life left to do that Like, I could have hedged by blocking with two guys, but then that sort of defeats the purpose of activating it first. So we're in the same position anyway. Like, I'm really trying to prioritize my creatures being alive rather than some creatures, uh, some life total. Well, I'm definitely going to counter that one, since they're going for, a, like, a disfigure or something. Okay, so we're... We are out removing them. Uh, unfortunately, our clock isn't super fast considering the talisman. And we did have to put Power Blast on top of the Death Spark, rendering it a moot point again. But, oh well, we, you know, we had lots more creatures to draw on our deck that would have been great. We didn't get there. And they have plenty of time to teach things for something good. Hopefully it's not going to be super awesome. I don't see any particular benefit to playing this pre-combat. Echoing Decay. Wow, multiple Echoing Decays. That's actually pretty unusual, I think. Um... It's not, it's great against our deck, I have to say. And it does give a deck like this outs against like the red deck wins version if they just have an awkward draw, which so I can get, I can get behind um, Echoing Decays. 
Innocent Blood. Now that's not a card that's good against us, but at least it is a one mana thing. It removes something from the table. Well... It's not looking great. Uh, but we can Pyroblast this Mystical Teachings to stop them from getting another Teachings. And like all we need to do, uh, I say casually, is just draw a bunch of guys and hopefully they don't draw a bunch of things. They drew a, a, another Angler? Oh, okay. That seems reasonable. I actually think you just have to Sacrifice its cohort. Like it's it's actually just not attacking a bunch of the time. And But on the other hand, like this is sort of useless anyway now, since so the like the pristine talisman negates it as a clock. And I don't imagine I'm gonna to get to kill another angler this game. So maybe I just play towards being a bit luckier and destroying a constant stream of guys, in which case this deals more damage. So I'll do that. Why not? Molten Rain. Um, let's see. Well, I guess I actually want to deal some damage. Like, I don't think I can prevent them from casting a whole lot here, so... Get some damage in. And they immediately undid it. That's fine, though. Six mana. What does this mean? Another chase eight. Well, it's not looking good for a hero. This is this is exactly the kind of spot that we want to draw our dash creature. I see no particular reason to play Sparksmith here since they can just flash back to Energy Dict. So I might as well hold it in hand for like some sort of bushwhacker turn. And might as well just play out of our lands to we so we can actually play multiple goblins in Bushwhack. Compulsive research. This is not the card I wanted them to draw. To be fair, I didn't want them to draw any cards. It would have been great if they just stopped drawing any cards whatsoever. Um, it's looking like the game is falling away from us now. Yeah. I mean, we are on turn 15. It's not outrageous that we have 8 lands. But that's, you know, about 50% of our cards. Okay, Malka War Marshal. It's about the best card we could draw there. Unless it gets countered. And it got countered. Hmm. Think twice. Into something. I think it was... Like another talisman, we just pack it up. Hmm. It's possible that they might deck themselves. Like these decks are not known for their multitude of unconditions. We've already removed two anglers. Uh, we might be able to pyroblast like a curse of the bloody tome if they have one of those in their deck somehow. Uh no, they have this. So yeah, we can we can scoop them up now. All right, so. Confirming that they have the talismans, we sort of really, really need to kill them, so moving in a nose. And we take out something else. Like this might be this might be too many, but you know we really need to kill them. So maybe maybe we should just maybe we should just play three. I see. I don't really want to draw one if they if they just ha don't have a talisman, and we need to keep a critical mass of creatures. Otherwise, there's no point in blowing up their thing because they'll just kill all the creatures and 
it won't matter. The sand seems uh, okay. And our, you know, our one drops are different names, so we're not going to get too bodied by echoing decay again. Well, this is a lot of smash. I think we might be paying echo in this. Uh, our hand isn't the fastest. This is uh, this is obviously the problem with cards like this. Our, our, our potential explosiveness, if they do have a slow draw, is definitely reduced. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do if they've, they're they planning to like Invicor's Justice us in turn 4 other than, you know, hope we can get a bunch of damage in before then and then do a bunch of damage after. So I guess what we really want to draw now is like a Bushwhacker uh, so we can have an effective post-sweeper turn. Although, you know, with our Conscripts and Cohorts, they do definitely get a bit worse against these decks. Uh, since we have a bit more spells than before. Well, there's a Bushwhacker. And since we can't attack with their cohorts anyway, I'm gonna kick it out. If they try and counter it, I'll definitely Pyroblast. And if we get swept by Invicor's Justice, so be it. To be fair, I didn't do the, didn't do the math and see how much damage they were taking. But, yeah. I, I didn't think they were, you know, suiciding if they cast in Vicar's Justice. But well, actually they are, because they take one from this. The, the leftover goblin. So actually that looks great. Well, there we go. We piloted a very linear deck, defeated the control deck, and had a couple of sweet games. Thanks for watching this series. See you next time.